Hey everybody, it's Chance from Aqua Escape here. I uh, wanted to share with you guys how I do my CO2 on this tank, and pretty much how I do it on all my other tanks too. Um, the only thing that varies tank to tank is the reactor style. Um, on this particular tank here, I am using the Nylog Aquatics Rex Griggs Reactor. Uh, I won this off an auction like three years ago. I ended up getting it for 12 bucks or 16 bucks because nobody bid. So lucky me. Um, it's awesome. It's an awesome reactor. They're available on Nylog.com. He has others that he's made improvements to and all sorts of cool stuff. Uh, but this is a very simple design and it works. I like it. Uh, it wasn't working well uh, the first time I used it when I used it on just a canister filter. Not this filter. I used it just on a an Eheim, and I don't remember the number series, but it was one of their larger ones. But it didn't have enough flow ever to prevent gas from building up. Um, it worked on a 24-7 CO2 cycle that I had with a, a low rate of CO2, low rate of injection, but uh, I stepped away from that and have gone back to a traditional CO2 series or CO2 setup, The uh, having the gas only on during the photo period style for this set up now uh, with the 24-7 CO2 it was working fine I was just flying through gas and uh, not really able to run out that much and get gas but now I've got another 50 pound tank so I may go back to 24-7 CO2 we I don't know this is working fine again both methods seem to work just fine for me and even in the switch uh, real quick even switching from 24-7 CO2 to regular CO2 I didn't have any algal bloom algal blooms or anything like that there's nothing uh, so as long as you're constant and you measure what you're doing and you check on what you're doing you should be fine whatever rate you use but anyway back to this so I used to have the Rex Griggs reactor hooked up to a regular filter and the filter would do the same thing the water would come down through here as the gas is being released about midway through uh, push it through blah 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 just like any reactor works. I'm sorry, I'm not gonna go into the mechanics of how a reactor works or any of that stuff in this video. Uh, so if you're a beginner and you're wondering how or why it works, uh, I can do another video later or just Google it and or look for one of the other millions of videos that are on YouTube that explain how a reactor works. Uh, but anyway, so I had it working off a canister filter, water pushing through. Uh, filters, canister filters are decent at filtration at best number one i'm not a fan of canister filters if i had a larger living space i would definitely go back to having a sump um, like i used to run but right now where i am i am confined to a canister filter so with that running a reactor off a canister filter is a horrible idea uh, i'm going to tell you why the main reason is flow rate change you know with all your mechanical filtration that's inside of these things, the sponges, the filter pads, etc., all that stuff, even your biomedia, uh, as that filters your water, as it cleans your water, if you're not hardcore on your filter maintenance game, basically every, I would say every two weeks, rinsing out the mechanical media or so, you're gonna have degradation and flow. Uh, and that degradation and flow is gonna translate into unstable CO2 levels. And the reason why is because this device relies on constant flow. It relies on flow rate being the same to keep the CO2 dissolving at the same rate. If that changes, if that flow changes, mathematically, you have different numbers now. Everything's going to change. So, yeah, it's very important to keep a stable rate, which is why <coughs> I switched to a DCT pump, an external DCT pump. Uh, this is a Jibo or Jabo, or I can never pronounce it, the, that, uh, right there, and this right here. It's the DCT 4000, I believe, so, anyway, with that, uh, I did a separate loop, so I now have the output for the filtration there, it's a little green, I didn't clean it last water change, I usually always do, but I didn't, uh, and then I have the outflow for the CO2 here, so, and the inflow for the filter there, big ugly fluval thing because I have yet to mod that out to look better. And the in intake for the CO2 there. So CO2 is separate. There's absolutely no 
filtration on my CO2 line. So water is pulled directly from there, unfiltered, brought into here, and then CO2 comes in from way down there all the way from up over here. So, yeah, that's how it works. That's how I run it. I would like to rehook up my Venturi loop. This is the mod that I made to the reactor. Uh, the mod does not come with a way to purge the reactor, so I do suggest, or the <laughs> reactor does not come with a way to purge itself. So I do suggest modding it and putting a little valve here so you can uh, basically get the gas to, to purge out of there. Sorry, my camera's being weird. Uh, basically purge the gas. Otherwise, when you go to do maintenance and the filter kicks back on, you'll have a, a, a bubble of gas typically. Uh, and a lot of that's gonna be room gas uh, because it's just air that's pushed up through the pipes when you do your water change and stuff. So you want a way to purge that out. Uh, that's why I, I drilled down into this and then put this valve here and then added a little CO2 hose or whatever. Uh, with this, what I plan on doing eventually is taking it and rigging a Venturi loop like I used to run on my 45 gallon cube. Uh, I used to have this venturi over and I'm going to have it going to the outflow of the actual filter. So that way any bubble or any gas that may be trapped up here, I'm pretty sure I have a good dilution right now, but any gas that may get trapped will just get redeposited into another line even back to the back of the aquarium. So. That's my next step for the CO2 infiltration under here with this tank. Uh, but yeah, hopefully this wasn't too jumbled for folks and they understand why a separate loop system is way better than running your reactor off of your filter. You'll have way less headaches. And all in all, I mean, aesthetically, it's really not that big a deal. The only thing that's bothering me in this tank aesthetically is the black surface skimmer and the black pipe back there. Everything else, whatever. I have two I have two inflows and two outflows, big deal. They're absolutely in no shape or form taking away from the plants. So sometimes you have to put aside what you think is aesthetic for what works best for your overall goal. Is your goal to have an aesthetically pleasing two you know, inflow or one outflow, one inflow for your tank. So you, I don't even know what space you're saving or whatever. If your goal is to have a simple filtration system, then good, do it. If your goal is to grow nice plants, <clears throat> look into a separate loop system for your reactor. That's all. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Uh, PM me with any questions, whatever, or leave them here. I'll happily answer them. All right, guys. See ya.